so yeah. Uh, so it was it was a matter of the scale of what they okay. could have been allowed to do if they had gotten the whole parcel rezoned. Right. Okay. So that that indicates to me that you you are in fact comfortable with having an eligibility boundary that includes you know these parcels around the 313 intersection. Yes. Yeah. I, I am. I guess I might be comfortable with it af after we read. I mean, most of the property up there is in this, what's the name, resort special? Range, uh, range grazing? Mm -hmm. Resort Well, special. the one, no, I mean, the light pink areas, the, what, what zone is that? The red is highway commercial, pink, and the pink is resort uh, special, special. Okay, resort, that's fine. Yeah, resort special. So, I, I think the, you know, we should revisit the use table of resort special. I, I don't think hotels are appropriate in that area, though campgrounds might be. Um, right, but and, the, and the resort special doesn't even, it's its not a permitted use by right now. So it doesn't really matter what the base zoning is. It, it, everything okay. is going to filter through the overnight accommodations overlay. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. um, in any case, I, I just think we need to take a more comprehensive look at the development of that area. I, I think it's not too, you know, it's kind of too late in Spanish Valley, but it's not too late up there. But um, I, I that being said, I kind of agree with Garish that, you know, if there were some additional campgrounds and they were well screened, et cetera, that doesn't, and you know, that seems reasonable. But I, but I don't, I don't think I just want to draw an eligibility boundary, you know, today and call it good. I think I'd want to, you know, make that part of a larger overhaul of the zoning in that area. What about a long 313? I see some potential there, I'd which may or may not be. I would want to leave that as a range and grazing. I think you know that's an area where the view said it hasn't been spoiled yet, as opposed to 191. We did get uh, a request, basically during the moratorium period, to put in uh, a very low density, high end uh, retreat in what is it? which parcel yeah, is it? this one? There's, there's been. Who owns it? Yeah, but it doesn't really matter. I, I mean, I don't want to get sidetracked by mm -hmm. yeah. debating the merits of who owns it. going to suggest that we recommend drawing an eligibility boundary around here? I'm, I'm supportive of an, el an eligibility boundary around that intersection. Okay, so uh, that's four. That's enough to give us confidence to actually work on that. Um, so uh, we can Give me, can you give me a sense of how far out that would go? The parcel for 191 I'm comfortable with. I'm uncertain about 133. Now, okay. keep in mind that the state of Utah is going to put a museum a little higher, right there where they found all the dinosaurs. Um, they have that state trust land, and they're going to put a museum there. Fire. And that... Is that ye the yellow white? Where's the where it's Normans came numbers. in and they were trying to get a campground? Oh, that's the, right, right in that area. The Normans came in. Right, right in there. That's where the. This parcel here. Right. So and that's. So where are they going to put a museum? It's going to be right over there, off of Dubinky Wells. That where that red line is. Where that road is. This is Dalton Wells. Dalton Wells. I'm sorry, Wells Dalton Wells. Dalton Wells. Dalton. That seems like. But the the. But I mean, they're gonna they're gonna put a museum. They're, they, I read it in the paper that I they're mean, a dinosaur. And I mean, so that that'd be an area where, like, you're in that same corridor, and that's a good place for a campground. On on the, I, I was against in the wash, because I just felt you know that's there's a reason that's a wash, <laughs> you know, to get those fifty or hundred year floods, but over and. I went and looked at that, and that's up higher 
on the next level and so the view shed wouldn't be directly off 191 now maybe if you were way out in the arches that's an area where like in the future if there was a museum there i probably would be comfortable with that but at the current time i wouldn't be comfortable with it at, at, given other options keep us focused is there any other support for working on an overlay up here or yeah. eligibility boundaries so let me understand the, the land ownership that this is set up um, it's over, I believe it's over here to the where, where um, Beeman's fields are, Sitla. Um. Is this Sitla land? No, this is privately owned. Okay. I can see uh, campground development out of this area. So, Sitla land where, where the fields are, which is right across the road. Okay, okay this is Sitla land, so right here somewhere is where they're going to it's not going to be a huge operation, though. I mean, we're not. It's not even going to be on the scale of the Moab Giant. It's going to be a destination. Yeah, I mean, it'll be a destination. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so this is like, uh, for those of you familiar, this is like. Uh, I mean, my, take it or leave it, my recommendation would be to not spend too much time on this area here um, and to really focus your efforts on this node around 313. Well, what if... I mean, because again, think about these eligibility districts as communicating to landowners where the county is going to entertain applications for the overlay. That's what we did with the high-density housing overlay ordinance. I understand. We were communicating, like, where would the county even entertain an application? And uh, I could say that Dalton Wells Road, even though it's sitting up, sitting up property, we should probably include because not that, but for yourself. Yeah. Canvas and Moab's right beside there, too. The what? Canvas of Moab is right there in that same little valley. Canvas of Moab. Moab under canvas. Moab, yeah. yeah. Moab of, this is Moab under canvas. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just like so. This is this Camp. is uh, public. Springs, right? Yeah, public campings in there. Yeah. So, but I mean, like, you know, those those parcels are really exempt from local zoning, anyways. Well, we'll see what the appellate court says. <laughs> But that's the reason for including in the overlay is so that if Sitla did come up with a proposal that yeah. people just really hated, we could say we could say yeah. this is okay. compliant with what we have. Okay, so I would say, I mean, so personally, what I would say then is include the Sitla property off of uh, Willow Springs because there's so much activity happening there already. That we would, I mean, I think there are a lot of people that would actually prefer to see a formalized campground go in there, right? Yep. And maybe Sitla would then sell it to a private campground developer to do that. I actually think that would be a good thing to communicate to Sitla. Yeah. But I also think that rather than the overlay allowing any kind of overnight accommodation, that it would, would just be campground. Yeah. Only. Just be campground yep. only. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so that's another way to think of this, and I don't know if that was clear, but like, you know, you could draw these eligibility boundaries based on the, the lodging use that you thought could work there. I mean, some could be a catch-all, some can be an eligibility boundary that's strictly for campgrounds. I think that makes sense to be one strictly for campgrounds. Okay, so, so I think, it, so is there consensus that like, Including this Sitla parcel, for instance, would just be for campground. Yes. Okay. The part, uh, the part that's to the west of the wash. So limited. Okay. So on this side of yeah. the wash. Okay. 
Uh, now, how about some of these parcels here where you were talking about drawing an overlay? Would you want to restrict that to a particular type of lodging use? Really? Okay. So you wouldn't be okay with, or, I, I don't, like condos back here if they were shielded from? Not this time. You would not be okay with that? Is that Water's what you're saying? an issue. I think there's still a few shed question over there. others on that? I, yeah, I, I feel like campgrounds are more appropriate there. And I mean, I don't know, I feel like, yeah, I, I support campgrounds being out there and not necessarily all overnight lodging types. I mean, Zachary, that doesn't keep them from coming. I mean, if somebody had a great ret retreat plan and they said, I need three apartments to house two employees and potential overnight guests and I everything else is going to be like a mom at a campus thing, they could come to the county council and request it. I understand that it doesn't signal that that's a possibility, but it's not restricting it. So well, if, if you were to draw an eligibility district and say only. here that only campgrounds are allowed, then nobody can come in and say, oh, can I do some condo units yeah. in addition to so, campsites? So applying any one of the overnight accommodations therefore restricts the possibility in our code of county council considering a different well, if this it's, area I was... I think what you're communicating to the public, just like we wouldn't have somebody coming to the county and saying, oh, I'm in an HDHO 10, but really I want to do 30 units per acre. Yeah. I understand that. I guess I, I, I didn't realize that that application, if it's not zoned, they can come and petition. It's not a sure thing, but if it is zoned to Correct. campgrounds, they can't petition yeah. for it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Right. So like right now, again, like anybody, like this parcel campgrounds. owner could come to the county and say, you know, could, would you apply the overnight accommodations overlay? So as soon as we apply any one of the overnight accommodation overlay, that landowner cannot petition the county council to have a different overlay applied. Not if we restrict well, they it. can. Okay, but that was my question. So if somebody but, says... But, okay, but yeah. so again, think about the diff there are two stages here. One, we're talking about drawing eligibility boundaries. You're talking about once the type of overlay has been applied. Yes. Okay. Once the type of overlay has been applied, yeah, they would have to come back and say, I, I, you designated me as an HD, as an, as an overnight accommodations overlay for campgrounds, but what I really want to do is um, condos. I don't want to derail you. I just want to clarify. No, so but it's really important what, you're, what so, we're getting at here. So, we is, have, so if we draw an eligibility boundary there and we imply an intent for campgrounds, that is both applying the overnight accommodation overlay for campgrounds. Okay, no, so, it's so not. Somebody, so we do an eligibility. It's not. It's communicating to this landowner that the county would accept an application for an overlay for campgrounds. It's not a guarantee. It's not applying the overlay. So, so let me try to rephrase I, what Emily said originally, which made sense to me, which is I, I think people were saying, you know, campgrounds only, and you expressed a little bit of surprise, you know, what if they wanted to put some condos back there? And I think the response was, well, that's an unusual circumstance, and they can always... You know, even though you know there's no expectation for people applying for like the condo overlay outside of the condo eligibility zone, they can still ask, and if it makes sense, the council could well, do it. Well, but I don't think, and that seems better than than relighting it. Yeah. If, just, but if just the like, alternative just like is, we don't have properties in an HDHO five district. I mean, we wouldn't even our office wouldn't even entertain an application if somebody said, "I'm in yeah. the HDHO five, but." You know, I really want to develop it 15 so, units per acre. Right. So like north. we can't act. We can't do anything so with that. So I don't think it's out of line. Just on this last, I don't think it's out of line if somebody says, "I want to build a campground. It's going to be low impact. I want to house my my employees there. But in order to do that, I need to build up to four overnight accommodation buildings set way back on the lot in order to justify the cost of improving just to house my." Employees. So what I'm saying is, then don't don't draw an eligibility boundary that That's restricts it to campgrounds. campgrounds. Yeah. Okay. Why would you do that then? I think if you're saying you're okay with this other approach, because okay. they, maybe they don't <laughs> yeah. want to. Okay, fine. I just needed to test the because yeah. I wasn't yeah. the boundaries. But, but then you're you're sort of indicating you know you're rolling out the red carpet for condo applications. I don't think any of this is rolling out the red carpet for any lodging development. No lodging developers looking at Moab or Grand County going, "Hey, the red carpet is out. Let's go put it in, baby." Okay. So you say it makes no difference then about the number of <laughs> applications we might receive. I mean, are you feeling super welcome to submit an application right now? No. Right? Like, yeah. 
I mean, let's be honest about like what we're really communicating to the development community. I mean, and I would like, I would imagine that if proposals were coming before the county council in that area, it would make that they would, I don't know, that it might make more sense for campgrounds and so priority might be given to campgrounds, but then it leaves the door open for something sure. like what you're describing. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think that I, in, I, in that circumstance, you just don't communicate that campgrounds only are allowed. You just yeah. say, you know what? Any any of the overnight accommodations overlays could be applied yeah. here. Okay, so I can, I can I just point out something though those those areas the highlighted areas are, are available for development, right? No. These are existing developments and the current code prohibits expansion. These folks okay. want to expand. Okay. They cannot. Yeah. But, okay. but there's an entry in our table that we're talking I mean there's a placeholder mm -hmm. that would allow expansion. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, with potentially, right? Like, you know, the county has to yes, do something on that. Okay, but, but I, isn't there an expectation that as part of whatever gets approved in January is going to, part of that's going to be expansion of existing things? Well, I mean, it's sort of my expectation, but, Okay, but, you, but know. you just said that they, they can't expand, and maybe that's true for a few more months, but it seems like long-term it's not really. I, I, the way personally, I would hope so. Okay, I just want to. Yeah, personally, I would hope so, but you yes. know, our, we don't get the vote, so. Okay, you know, I mean, I think like we've communicated. You were asked, you were saying they wouldn't be allowed to expand. They are currently not allowed to expand, and the code would have to change to allow for expansion. Well, and both of these developments would like to expand for the same reasons that. So uh, that parcel is covered by the overlay already. Oh, we did get it. Right. So it's and, our, it was a uh, campground already. Oh, that's and right. so their proposal has vested. They would like to do other development there as well, but mixed uses. So, so uh, just to bring us back to this note, it sounds like they're, I mean, I heard from four of you that you were okay with putting an eligibility boundary around this node. It's not a guarantee. It's communicating to landowners that the county would entertain a proposal. Okay. That's not what I said I was in agreement with. I was thinking specifically for campgrounds. Okay. So that was my next part, though, is that you were – so. There, there's consensus that overnight accommodations could be developed here, new ones. There is clearly to me not consensus on whether or not it should be restricted to campgrounds or if all overnight accommodations types could be entertained. Again, no guarantees in any of this. I, I've changed my thinking and would now support all types being entertained in that area okay. as opposed to campgrounds only. I, I think this is a, a very sensitive area and I, if we're going to plan for future development there, I wouldn't want to do it just by throwing down an eligibility district in the next few months. I'd rather look at, you know, all uses in, including that, things that are not overnight accommodations. I'd like, you know, to, us to try a little bit harder about youth sheds and things like that. So. I mean, I think this development in it, it, around the 313 junction is something we should be discussing in the short term, but I think trying to do it as part of some eligibility districts that get drawn in a few months from now is a mistake. Well, I don't think that's... Um, I, 
think if we said campgrounds here but looked at it, we would be okay too. We look at other uses. I'm thinking there may be eventually needs for restaurants out there like that one guy came in and wanted to propose. You know, currently without a zone change that's not allowed. I, I just think it, you know, it's one you know, often we get caught in this position where there's a lot of uses by right, you know, by the existing zoning and things go in a direction we don't like. And that's not really the situation there. A lot of most of it's zone range None and grazing. Of this is a use by right. Though. Right. Right. But and and so I don't I I don't know. I I just don't think we should be inviting people to apply for more campgrounds before we decide in some more comprehensive ways that more campgrounds are what we want there. Granted, he was also at least communicating that he was willing to take a risk and do that with long-term housing, but certainly would be more viable. Not uh, Yeah. What about, uh, is there a note around the airport? Um, most of that is BLM land. The county owns a couple, you know, basically the land around the airport, but the rest is BLM land. So basically we can't decide on that one, so what else is there? Because yeah. it ain't getting nowhere but yeah, chasing I mean, a I mean, dog around honest, the dang like, tree. To be honest, I, I, I am you know, consistently amazed that the, that the Planning Commission is willing to engage so much on you know, potential new lodging development at 313 and not at all between, you know, let's say, uh, uh, you know, El Charo Loco and, and Mill Creek. We haven't talked about campgrounds there yet. Well, yeah. I think, I think that's an, an important difference because up around 313, you know, if there's going to be development, campgrounds are kind of the most plausible thing. You know, that's like the main thing going on up there. And saying no campgrounds would sort of be like saying no development at all. In this well, area, that's not there's true. We've re I've received, I've had five, right. well, three conversations with people who wanted to do stick-built structures out there. Okay, but I think there's a lot of other commercial uses that could happen around this area. So no one's saying they don't want to see development in that stretch of highway. They just would like to see development that's not, you know, that has fewer overnight accommodations. No, so I get that. So I'm, I don't. I'm right I don't there see with you. Okay, so I, just, I don't. I don't, I don't go to no. But there's a, I, I mean, I, I, it just seems like you're confusing, you know, incremental changes with, you know, absolute values. We've, we've already got overnight accommodations in this area. No one's saying that. So we've got these right here. So. Right, yeah. And so. I'm for it. It doesn't I'm seem so extreme it. to say that that's kind of feels like the right amount and we don't need more. Yeah. So, like, I'm for that and I'm for out there at, at 313 and I'm for it and. I'm tired of listening to everybody talk about how they're not. So you guys just go ahead and keep talking about how you're not. And no, I'm for those. And I'll see you next meeting. I support an eligibility boundary for everything but Hotel Meltel from El Chiro Loco to Mill Creek. Everything but hotels and motels? So you'd be okay with campgrounds or like condos? Mm-hmm. I don't think campgrounds necessarily belong there, but I don't see a compelling reason not to entertain not it. To go in there. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> you know. I think hotels and motels are the really sensitive one around areas close to uh -huh. residential development. And, and like, I mean, just to, you know, you know, my objective is not just to be the polemic here with the planning commission, uh, but like, Think about the Apache Inn, right? That's one 16,000 square foot hotel surrounded by residential. And do you think it like so dramatically disrupts the, you know, area around it? I don't think it would if there was an Apache across the street and Apache on the next sure, block and sure. an Apache. Absolutely, like, yeah. potentially. But, but, 
what's to suggest that the county is going to approve an overlay request for four hotels right across the street from each other and next to each other? It's uncertain. But the thing about the Apache is it's grandfathered in. And if somebody bought the Apache and said, I, I want to tear this hotel down and I want to build some affordable housing, it, it would be cost prohibitive because the value of that land is so much because it's grandfathered in this hotel. I want to sure. see hotels and motels get redeveloped in this town. We already have the footprint. I think that there's a lot of opportunity as we look to the development standards to incentivize some really good environmentally friendly community building opportunities there potentially. I think that there's enough possibility with redevelopment there to support what exists. We are talking about some really strict and some very, very, I don't want to use the word progressive in the political sense, but like really forward thinking um, standards that we are proposing or recommending to the county council. I want to see what developers have because there, there's really interesting things that you can do when you start to mix very small scale different types of development usage and it's, it's an eligibility boundary. It signals to people, show us what you got. How are you going to help make the community better, invest here, grow our economic base, support diversity of use. I think that that's compelling. I think the uses along that area support it. I agree it. with you, but I think the right place, Emily, is north of town. For campgrounds no. and so on. That's so, fine. We can we can agree to disagree, but I'm strongly I'm suggesting that we consider that There is property north of town that has a lot of development potential that is not currently under construction. But there's a very big difference between somebody building a campground in 313 and somebody building a few small no, I'm talking Nightly about rentals. I, I think by north of town he meant like on north those of four downtown. parcels. No, I'm talking in, about or within the city limits. Within the in the city, city limits. Well, okay. Well, I don't. I mean, the, the county, the, the county doesn't need to provide. Uh, if the city has the capability, the county doesn't necessarily have to yeah. fill in. Uh, so, for, for example, you know, there's no hospital in the county. You know, we so, so we wouldn't build thing. another one. Yeah. Because, you know, there's already one in the city. I was but thinking like, the area look at north the of the developability of like this corridor yeah. relative to. And the city is where land, where parcels are so expensive to build a piece parcels together enough to do something. Whereas in that stretch, you have you're still in the range of current property values to be able to offset. Well, it's expensive everywhere. It's expensive right. everywhere. So, I know. so the, the message we, we heard during scoping is that pe I, people are. I, what? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I thought you were done. I've made my point. It doesn't matter. <laughs> My main, my main thought is this, is that um, especially if you don't have these applications coming in, you know, like you review them in blocks, um, and let's say you have that entire area and you keep a piece of new applications, and, and there's no way to predict how you know, to vote on that, but I just think it would be hard if a developer came with a proposal that maybe it was a hotel and hotel that was kind of So I just, you know, I just don't know if that's like, I get, I totally uh, appreciate and, and in part agree with your thought on how that will create this mixed community, but I also see it as like us approving overnight combinations <laughs> continuously, you know, again, in these areas. And that's, and the community has made a very, the vast majority of Well, I don't, I guess I'm, I'm just not as confident in that because we're comparing apples to oranges, right? Like we're comparing the status quo or what was the status quo to a completely new landscape of like land use regulation around lodging. And so I don't think that like, I mean, it, you know, maybe the conservative approach, not in a political sense, but uh, the conservative approach is to say, well, okay, you know, let the community reorient what its approach is or relationship is to lodging now that, you know, it's not just this, like, free-for-all. Um, but I, I, but I, I, 
you know, I spent a lot of time talking to people and a huge range of people across different political spectrums, you know, in industry orientation, ages, length of time in here. And I can definitively say that, like, it's much more nuanced than that. It's much more nuanced than that. I mean, I, I would guess that the vast majority of residents in Moab would have no clue if a restaurant or, or if, if, you know, a 12-unit building had three units that were lodging and nine units that were long-term housing. Like, So you think if we, we took a poll in Moab and said, do we have, you know, exactly the right number of overnight accommodations or too little or too few or too many. I'm saying yeah. I don't know that that's the right question. It's, yeah. Well, but I think that's the question people, I mean, that's the message we're getting. And, and I think it, well, a lot no, of the complaints. Well, it's not the message we're getting. We're getting a much more nuanced message. It's not the message I got. I don't know. Well, I, I, was at, I was at a lot of those. a limited segment of the I, I was at those public hearings. You know, that was a pretty broad segment of people who attended. I, 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 I admit I didn't go talk to the, the high school students, so I'm okay. missing out on well, them. I wouldn't. I wouldn't suggest that uh, the high school students are the only segment of the community that have a different view, <laughs> right? It, so please don't denigrate the like conversations that I had with a much wider range of. of okay, but if we just look at then just by <laughs> by saying, oh, it's just the high school students. Okay, oh, I, I mean I'm not disputing that there are people who ha hold those views, but whenever you know, if we were ever to quantify things, look at how many comment letters we got for the, you know this position versus that. It's it's been about as one-sided as any issue that ever gets discussed here. I mean, you know, in particular, you know, there was a sign-on letter with 700 and some people saying that we shouldn't approve things until the pipeline is empty, which to me seems extremely reasonable. It I mean, if like, we were having this conversation three years from now, after all those things have been built, that feels a little more comfortable than having it now. I think Abby has a comment. Oh, just it seems like we're all uncomfortable with the potential of the the max size hotel going in anywhere and i'm wondering if there's other ways that we could clearly communicate like clearly kind of quell people's i don't know that we could clearly communicate that what we would like to see are the small the 12 units where three are overnight rentals and nine are long term you know but that's our that is definitive that it's is already that is so communicated you feel, okay that's that already is, clearly yeah, communicated I mean, you want to see what it says yeah, Read no, I mean, I, I believe you. I just, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, they don't that's, need to do the eligibility map, do they? <laughs> that is, so, that's included in the so, discussion. Yeah, I mean, so, so another approach is that we don't draw these eligibility boundaries and you just let people apply wherever. No, I, 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 should, I, I definitely agree apply, with you. We should draw eligibility boundaries. I think we should apply, apply a few, the ones that we talked about, and... Send it to the county is our recommendation, and they can draw. Well, I think, I, I mean, I guess what I'm communicating to you is that I don't hear enough consensus on that, so I'm not going to come to you with a recommendation. If you want to forward something as a body to the county council, you need to make a motion and see if it passes. And, and then the county council is going to act because you have, like, I mean, the reality is you're not giving staff enough consensus on, on the boundaries. Um, I mean, I think there's consensus on, on so what, what I guess I'm saying is we, what we can do is we'll include these four parcels, we'll do something around this node here, yep. and, and then, you know, I guess we'll see if anybody else wants to suggest anything else. I think you so, have consensus from the Planning Commission. But, but what that is going to communicate, just so everybody knows, I mean, especially the folks who you know, are kind of on the fence about what they might want to see, is like, it, the minute we do that, we're saying nobody outside those boundaries can submit an application for an overnight accommodation. So correct. Is everyone clear on that? Yep. There. Can yeah. you pull up that text you were I, pulling up for Abby? Uh, and I would like, I would like to see if, if there are
suddenly got this glut of applications and we reached our max. And, you know, it was like, and I just don't, I just don't want to be too But I don't, well, I don't but think, I think it's, that, oops, sorry, go ahead. I, I don't think it's the same. I mean, we were wanting to see right. workforce housing. We want more units of, of, of workforce housing in Grand County. We don't necessarily like need and want more overnight accommodations as a community, and so the evaluation of like of the HDHO was at, was you know weighted was towards to approving them because we want because there is such a need for workforce housing, and I don't think that that same so you're, attitude you're basically is going to confirming approach. what Rachel is saying, but but I also think that the counterpoint is. There's also clear evidence that in the HDHO process, the county has pushed back and said, this is too much. You know, you needed to knock your development down by 100 That's units. That's true. Or we're going to say no to your development, which is, you know, I, again, I don't get the vote, but what I anticipate is going to be the case for at least one that's in the pipeline. Um, so, so I do, so I mean, I, I get what you're saying, but like, you know, I'm pretty happy with everything that's been approved already, and I think that the projects that are being proposed are are pretty high quality projects. And, and again, yeah, we wanted them, but uh, but there is certainly evidence that it's not just a free for all and totally you know overly permissive. Um, and uh, Rachel. I mean, nobody is jumping, chomping at the bit to go through this process. If there was a um, urban node development standard for project size that was more strict than the one that was currently in the table that we were reviewing today, and it applied within those near to city boundaries, would that ease your comfort with that type of development being eligible in that area, i.e., instead of 15,000 foot square foot building size and 50,000 square foot project, more like um, you know 5,000 square foot building size and maximum 10,000 square foot project, right? Like as far as like the the slippery slope dilemma that I see you grappling with, and I agree, I, I agree with you, and I've had a similar feeling during the HDOH application period. Um, is it is it the potential project size or potential number of applications, or is it just the use on its face that concerns you? I don't know. I, I think it's just the, um, I think it, to me it's just the risk that, um, again, if these things are coming in piecemeal, that that is what everybody's going to apply for, and then it will have no impact on land values and mm -hmm. the possibility of creating any type of development. That's my main you know, I'd almost be more comfortable if things were like, I just every, had to review everything in the block, you know. So <laughs> I, but on that block, I think that's where you get to making a case for a smaller um, urban uh, eligibility area around the Mill Creek I ninety or one ninety one interchange. Because at that point, you can see, like, is there a race to build condos there, or do we start to see more measured? I, I mean, just if you're concerned about risk, I think it signals an intent to consider additional development, but it also signals an intent to watch, pay attention, be mindful. I would be comfortable 
I mean, when I say I, I would propose an eligibility boundary, I would like to see us take a step forward of considering what an urban eligibility boundary looks like. Because if we, you know, I, I just, I, I think it signals the right thing to the community and it allows us to learn without overshooting. And I think it allows us to see if it does actually create that kind of development. So if there was a, um, Zachary, would you just zoom in on that, um, the, the node with Mill Creek further south? Yeah, that, yeah. I'd just like to see where you While you're walking up, I will also suggest that, uh, you know, sending the right signal to the community is one thing, sending the right signal to the Utah legislature is another thing. Uh, that, you know, like it or not, we have to be considering. Uh, and, uh, I'm, I'm saying something in the realm of this rectangle here, uh, with, and I'm, I'm I also think it would be worth revising the project size for urban those. Yeah, so just note, this is already entitled for apartments. That's apartments. This is a campground. Mm -hmm. So down Mill Creek Road, there's a bed and breakfast in here, right? Across the way from Mill Creek. So there to kind of behind, like that, that general vicinity is what I think makes sense given the current development. I think it makes sense given use of the area. We have the road system to support that kind of development. Um, so that grows by the other side. Um, you know, well, so, you know, I, I mean, I'm looking at this for the first time, so I'm not. But some, somewhere in this area, kind of, you know, Holyoke, south, and then north of the University, to Mill Creek, something here, I think, makes sense. You know, like, they just development wise. And to be clear, I mean, you all are drawing these boundaries so restrictively, it doesn't make sense to have an urbanizing versus a rural node here. Like, we don't have enough boundaries to justify having these two different types of districts. The only reason districts. I think it makes sense is because if it signals a differentiation. Right, but again, like, we don't have, we don't, I mean, I, I would suggest, my recommendation, it would be a strong recommendation, is to just get rid of this differentiation between urbanizing and rural if you're not going to draw boundaries around enough places where it even warrants having that differentiation. If it helps bring people along to consider more options towards a policy goal, I... That, that's... But I'm not yeah. going to argue with you. I, you know, I'm, I think I've stated my position. Anyway. So, uh, I mean, I, I'm going to suggest that we cut the conversation and uh, we will draw a boundary around these and around 313 and um, you know anyone else who wants additional parcels can make a motion on that and it'll go to the county council and we'll see what the county council does well why don't we do it as a uh, we could vote individually on different areas so we could vote on 313 separately then we could vote on just sure. for the bridge and we could if if you can come up with a boundary, a proposed boundary around the uh, university uh, junction or from the county limits out to that point, uh, we could. Well, I mean, I'm going to do that because I think that there are council members who want to engage in that conversation. So, like, that's going to happen. I, mean, I have the I have the ability to at the staff well, level do that. It doesn't matter what we recommend. Them, so. Well, no, I think that I think that. Uh, you know, I'm not fixated on what these boundaries are. So my feeling is I would love the Planning Commission's input on that. But if you don't want to engage on that, I mean, I think that staff has the ability to engage with the County Council on that. Do you need the motion tonight since we have to this No, but we do need to set when we're going to hold a public hearing because the County Council needs to vote on January the 3rd or 7th, whatever. But their first meeting in January, so they need to have a public hearing at their December 17th meeting. Uh, so the only options that leaves for you all is to have a public hearing on December 10th, or um, uh, and we would schedule a public hearing with the county council on the 17th, not having any definitive knowledge of what the outcome of your public hearing is going to be. But in order to meet the noticing requirements, we would have to do that. Um, 
the only other option is for you to uh, reschedule the November 26th meeting or an, another date. So it's, it'd be a special meeting, regardless. So, I mean, I'm a little worrisome. We, yeah. Could, could about we have our public <laughs> hearing on December 10th? Yes. But, yeah, that, but I'm going to have to December. notice the yes. county council public hearing for the 17th. Yes. And that means you all need to have a level of confidence that you're going to forward something to the county council. Well, I feel confident that we will be able to forward something. <laughs> okay. And in your staff report and your eloquence, you can explain to them that even though maybe some parcels were not included in a proposed map that we looked at, you recommended. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, That's just the way the game's played. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Zachary, I think yeah. it's Yeah, I mean, I absolutely will. Okay. I'm going to draw it around this entire yeah. boundary. I'm, I mean, I, frankly, I, like, yeah. it, it, from a planning perspective, it makes sense. And, and it may not make sense in the context of do you want more lodging or not, but it makes sense in communicating to the development community, you know, at least from my perspective, where I think, um, mm -hmm. you know, the county should consider applications. Yeah. So, so you're saying I think that just the overlay is total number of units, The overlay that you're proposing to draw is going to include if there is a like, from Millbrook to Creek. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So I, I guess one, I think maybe something that we're disagreeing is uh, it seems to me when we're making these decisions about eligibility districts, one thing we should keep in mind is you know, the number of the hotels we already have here, the number that might get built in the city, and the number that are in the pipeline. And I, you know, this is thought experiment I would do, is suppose that the pipeline had twice or three times as many units as it does now, would you still be recommending the same area? Because it seems like all the arguments you give are completely insensitive to all those things, so far as I can tell. Um, you know, it, it you're asking me to you're asking me to consider what if the pipeline was three times larger than it actually is? Sure. Something Why like would that. I do that? Well, just hypothetically, just I'm just trying to understand your reasoning. You're saying that this, this is a good place for, for hotels, and I agree with you. If we didn't have well, if the pipeline hotel. included some developments in here, then maybe I would have a different position, but it doesn't. Okay, so, so, so if there are so a lot it's, of hotels... So, so I'm talking, it, it's a location-based policy. It's not just a growth policy in the abstract. It is very much tied to a specific geography. Okay, and I guess I'm suggesting that maybe it's too closely tied to a specific geography without taking into account things that are happening well, but it is. It is taking so into so account that stuff no because many, you know what? Like four overnight rental units immediately attached to, let's say, a restaurant is very different than even 40 units that are three miles away. Or light manufacturing or um, retail of any kind. But I, I, just, I just think the absolute number of... You're focused exclusively on that. I think it's the single biggest issue. It may be, but it's not the only issue. Okay. And it's because we, this community has also, in as much opposition as we have heard to lodging, we have heard, like, impassioned pleas for other uses. And, and I think that it's just naive to assume that just by restricting lodging, all those other uses are going to come to the fore. That's not how development works. So if we look at other communities, they never built a restaurant without putting a few overnight rentals on top. I mean, it seems like that does happen. Well, I don't want to go down that path. I mean, and it's not it's not to suggest that like you know your counterpoint has no merit. It's it's I would that say like it, it's just so much more complicated. It's quite late, <laughs> and we've kind of kicked this dog around. Ripped the mask, yeah. We'll look it over. So are we looking then at meeting December 10th or meeting in two weeks? Okay. So we won't see you until then, just so you all know. Well, yeah, not in this formal capacity. I would appreciate once you start to get some Yeah, I mean, that's typically the so approach. So, on the expansion issue, we're not going to be discussing that before December 10th? We won't have any meetings. So, what's the default of the what, what is going to It just to remains you? prohibited. Unless, unless you all want to recommend something, you know. I mean, I think a number of people express that it makes more sense to would it do you think it would make more sense to try to meet again in November to discuss this issue or to try to address this issue in the new year because it will be restricted and we can discuss the best way to open it up uh, yeah I mean I was very comfortable with kind of punting it until um, after we get through this I think, you know okay, there are yeah, certainly yeah. there are certainly you know, developers who are, you know, itching to expand. I mean, I, I, don't, I guess I, I think we've got I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. I mean, legally, there may be some implications, you know, that there may be folks that, you know, all of a sudden do file, 
you know, takings claims. I don't know if we're out of the statute of limitations on that. I think we might probably are. There may be some instances that we have to deal with, but well, you know, there are definitely people who are looking to expand and can't. Um, and um, and I'm cognizant of that. I don't have a good enough sense of what it would mean to punt that entirely. You know, past January four. Uh, no, and past January fourteenth. But right. make um, it a priority as soon as yeah. The initial. I, mean, I think we should make it a priority, but I don't think we should try to tackle it at this point. Yeah, I mean, I also am cognizant. Like we've been talking about this for a year already, <laughs> so you know, there's a little bit of drain on everyone's parts. I think. <laughs> well. Are we? All right, so we're <laughs> <laughs>